Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a project to share with you today. We are in the middle of our ancient China main lesson block for homeschool and we are finding a ton of inspiration from this book called Lucky Bamboo Crafts by Jennifer De Cristoforo. This book has a lot of really simple projects to do and the best perk is that it comes with extra information, historical and regional, about the different crafts that are included in the book. The project that we're going to work on today is me dynasty pottery now I have a bowl here to use as a template I also have my Sculpey oven bake clay which I absolutely love and we're going to try this out rather than using the recipe that's included in the book so we have altered the project a little bit and I typically do this with a lot of our projects and even our recipes we we work with what we have on hand and we make it our own sometimes using better quality materials so that the project lasts longer now, I've never done this project this way, and I'm sort of experimenting as I go along, and I'm not quite sure if this is going to work out or not, but I'm going to use this bowl as a template or as a mold so that I can make our own bowl. Now, I do it a couple of different ways, and my daughter's going to join me in a little bit. She's 10 years old, and she is going to make one as well. My 14-year-old son, who is also doing this main lesson block with us, skipped this project, but I think once he sees them when he's when they're done, he might change his mind. So here's my 10 year old daughter and I'm going to help her make the same bowl, but use a smaller bowl so that it's a little bit easier for her to paint in the end. And so she's going to work with the clay. It's already soft, but it, we do need to warm it up and make it malleable so that we can form it into the bowl. Now this is just one way. You could also just form the bowl without using a bowl by creating a little bit of a nest or a little crevice right in the center of your ball and then just kind of bringing the bowl up that way. But we found this to be a, a suitable alternative to just creating the bowl from a round ball of clay. So now I've helped her put it into her bowl. Now she's going to work on pressing it against the sides until the sides are quite thin. I'm using my X-Acto knife to remove the excess clay that's around the rim of the bowl. And then I could see that some places were thicker than others. And so I am working those areas that are a little bit thicker and I keep pressing them in order for them to be a little bit thinner. It is going to press the clay up above the rim of the bowl. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife again to remove that. So it's looking pretty good. You can still see a lot of finger marks on the inside of the bowl. I'm trying to work with it so that you don't see that as much but there isn't much that I know what to do in order to remove those finger marks and those impressions so we're just going to leave it and I'm going to fix my daughter's by removing that clay as well. For hers I decide to remove the whole bowl before I bake it. I'm not sure about this particular piece of pottery which is quite special to me and so I'm going to remove her clay first uh, because I'm also not sure whether it's going to come out of the glass bowl. So I'm doing this a few different ways and I am going to preheat my oven to 275 degrees. This is according to the directions on the package. I have a little piece of parchment paper here. It's going to line my tray so I've got my three different bowls using three different techniques. It's time to pop it in the oven and we're going to set that timer for 15 minutes. I am using a bowl that is oven safe up to that temperature. So once it's done, we're going to remove it from the oven. We do not want to overcook it or cook it at a higher temperature. You do want to follow the directions very precisely when it comes to using these different oven baked clays. So now I am going to try to remove mine from the bowl, but it is really hot and it was kind of stuck, but it does eventually come out and I am super pleased with the way that it turned out. I've never tried this technique before. That's why I made a couple extra bowls just in case and I am super, super pleased with the final look. Here's another bowl that I tried to kind of place on the outside of a bowl and, and bake it that way. Uh, I love the shine on this one bowl. It looks really beautiful and it really looks like porcelain even though it's just clay. 
So next we're going to paint them and I've got my acrylic paints and we're going to mimic the images that are included in the book and they have this beautiful light blue color and so I'm going to mix some black and some blue and some uh, white together and I do not get the color that I want at all. There was way too much black in there. So next we're going to add just the blue and the white and just a touch of that black and I get just the right color that I want for this project. So this is actually a really challenging, time-consuming painting project. And I did not dilute my paints with water, and so it was quite thick and difficult. And about midway through, I add water, which completely transformed the project and made it way easier. So again, I am copying the image that's in the book. It's not really there for you to copy exactly. It's there as an example. But since I didn't know any other images to use, I decided just to copy what was in the book rather than to look up other designs, but there are tons of different designs and there are also a lot of sceneries that you could choose as your artwork inside or outside your porcelain bowls. So doing a geometric design feels a little bit easier for me, but it's really time consuming. Doing something that's a little bit more artistic, I think could be really beautiful, but I opt to go with the geometric design that's in the book, which in the end looks a little bit Greek or Roman to me, maybe more Greek in the end because of some of the motifs that are around the rim of the bowl, but I am still just going to copy the one that's included in the craft book. I do make a couple of changes here and there because it is more challenging to paint with a brush than you might expect. So there wasn't quite as much room for some of the designs in the end. So I do alter them a little bit. But overall, I am super pleased with how it's looking, especially once I dilute my paint with a little bit of water. It made the whole process so much easier and a lot more enjoyable and also a little bit faster as well. This was a really long project. I'm going to show you this in real time how long it takes to paint it was I want to say painfully slow but actually it was meditatively slow and as I worked on each of these different sections I found that it was quite relaxing although I was a little bit impatient to finish the project I quickly realized that this was going to be far more challenging than, one, than what my 10-year-old can do. So if you'd like to see her bowl, you can check out the blog post that accompanies this video. That link is down in the description box below. You can see the bowl that she made and the other examples that we have, as well as all of the materials that we used in case you want to do this project as well. At this point, I'm going to do a scenic design on the outside of the bowl. And again, this matches one of the examples in the book. I actually don't like it, so I get a wet paper towel and I remove it all while it's still wet. I did have to really scrub it to remove all of the paint. I decide just to go with a geometric design on the outside in order to match what was on the inside. I wasn't really confident that I could do a landscape image and be happy with it after I'd already done so much work on the interior of the bowl, which I really did like in the end. So I decided to just go with something that was a little bit more geometric on the outside. I really like the way that it turned out, but it was a really lengthy project. I want to say over two hours to do this. I have done China painting in the past with my grandmother when I was a child, and it is a beautiful process, but it is it does take a lot of time, and it also is quite challenging to work with a paintbrush in order to get the detail that you want. I'm going to go ahead and sign this on the bottom of my bowl before I work a little bit more on some details on the bottom part of the outside of the bowl. What I really liked about this project is that it gave me a sense of what the artisans and the crafts people might have done in the past and how long the process was in order to make pottery, the whole firing process and the painting process. It is a very lengthy process and being able to do this on a smaller scale using clay and acrylic paints gives you that sense of what it took for these artisans to do their work, even though in the end, <laughs> this does not compare by any means, but it's really the spirit of the project that we are going for when we are mimicking these 
crafts or these recipes or these projects that people used to do in the past. I'm really pleased with the way it looks in the end. My daughter was so delighted with the way this turned out. It really looks like a piece of pottery or porcelain that's been painted, especially if you look at it from afar. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to see some of our other ancient China projects and tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information as well as photos on our projects. You can find that link down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see what we're doing and how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.